ChatGPT, it's taking the internet by storm. I'm a pharmacy lecturer by profession. I'm going to ask ChatGPT some GPHC style questions and let's see if it can answer it correctly. So here I've got some quiz questions. They're slightly shorter than what a typical GPHC style question would look like. So that body of the question is shorter, but I'm just going to use these nonetheless, just to see how it performs. So here we've got the first question, which of the following is an example of an antibiotic drug from the incretin mimetic class? And here you can see very interestingly, it's comfortably picked up on cisagliptin. This is something that I expected it to do because it was more of a straightforward question about drug class. So let's see if it picks up on, let's, look at this question in particular. So here we're gonna focus on monitoring requirements for digoxin. <laughs> that was literally just answered it incredibly quickly. And we've got the answer as D, electrolytes and serum potassium. So it answered it fairly quickly. The answer I was expecting was, this was a bit of a trick question, I wanted electrolytes and renal function. So there's no mention of renal function here at all with the option it has selected. It's got caught out by the serum potassium, which would of course be included within the electrolytes. Let's move on to the next question. So I'm going to ask you a question about gentamicin. Very quick and accurate. So it's picked up on the fact that gentamicin is nephrotoxic. You need to know the serum concentration because it has a narrow therapeutic index and it can have an impact on auditory and vestibular function. Liver function tests are not required with gentamicin. It's picked it up within two seconds. Incredibly quick. I am going to look at medications for urine discoloration. Here it's having a bit of time to think. Picked up very quickly. Nitrofurantoin can cause yellow-brown urine discoloration. Nefopam. So nefopam is infamous for causing pink urine discoloration. So I'm gonna pop this question into ChatGPT. Oh, so a very interesting response. It's saying that pink is not a known urine discoloration associated with Nefopam and it's not known to cause, so I'm just gonna do a quick search because this is Yes, so it's very clearly known. The NHS says, Nefopam may also color your pee pink. Do not worry, this is harmless. So it it got the question wrong. Um, so it, it mixed up the question entirely because it looked for what is not a known um, color. Let's ask the question, can Nefopam turn your urine pink? This, I would be interested to see the response, considering the fact that it's said. So it's saying there's a few case reports, but it appears to be a rare side effect. So this is a much more accurate statement. It's taking into account studies. So a very interesting response. Let's move on to another question. Which of the following is an example of a tetracycline antibiotic? it should breeze through these sorts of questions. So it's picked up immediately. Doxycycline is an example of a tetracycline antibiotic. Let's ask about gentamicin. Very quick, in seconds. So here, we've got some side effects associated with ACE inhibitors. One in particular 
is very common. It's C. So here, this is where I, I knew it would struggle. So here it has to differentiate between uncommon, rare and common side effects. And here you can see it's just given me a whole host of different side effects, but has not taken into account that alopecia is a common side effect and the rest are not common side effects. So that's something that I expected it to struggle with and it has. Let's see if there's anything else. Which of the following is not a typical trigger? So here are these questions where you have to pick out what is not a typical tr trigger. I'm expecting it to struggle with. So this answer, it said it with such confidence, it even confused me. Um, aerobic exercise is a trigger for rosacea. It was the cold drinks that was not a typical trigger. So here it said cheese, spicy foods and cold drinks are known typical triggers. But it can vary from person to person, that's fair. But not the response that I was looking for. Very interesting responses, very useful. However, there are still little parts of it that could take things into more consideration. And it would be risky to use this solely as a tool for revision, for example. But very useful nonetheless. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.